Amazon gift card uh, at the end of the at the end of the presentation. Um, you know, we encourage questions uh, if you if there's you know specs or things that you really want to know about within the product. Please uh, don't hesitate to use the questions function within uh, the the chat feature here in GoToWebinar. Uh, we'd love to hear. Want to reach out and you know get with our uh, account management team at the end of the at the end of the discussion. Uh, we'll provide a, a way to do that, and uh, hopefully everybody gets a again everything that they uh, they came for today. Uh, go ahead and uh, take it away for us, Stacy. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Th thanks, Jordan. I appreciate it. And um, one of many pre-sales. Um, um, consultants slash engineers that we have here here at ArcServe. Um, glad to be here speaking to you to everybody today. I will add that um, uh, one of my favorite things to do is to talk about our products um, from this perspective is a big part of my job. And I have been in one way or another involved with ArcServe since, you know, the tape backup days. Okay, so definitely, hopefully I can answer most of your questions that you have out there. I already see one about is UDP 9 a free upgrade from 8.1. Um, if you are under maintenance, and absolutely it is a free upgrade. Okay, so if you're covered under maintenance, you do have the rights to the to the new version of the product. So, and I would encourage you to to upgrade to to 9 as we talk about some of the features later on throughout the this presentation. Um, first off, why are we here? Of course, so we're going to talk about UDP 9, not just UDP 9, we'll mix in a couple other things within there as well, but primarily UDP 9. But we're really here to talk about, you know, protecting our data, right? And, um, you know, if we take a look at, you know, uh, what's the most important thing other than the people, I'm always a big proponent of the people are really the most important thing in a company, but really that lifeblood for many companies is that data, right? That's what's going to keep everybody employed. If they lose all that data, that could be detrimental. Now, it depends on the type of company, obviously, um, as far as that goes, but, you know, um, it's really going to be the key factor there is we need to make sure that we're protecting that data. And there's really two, if you think about it from my perspective, there's two, there's, there's two threats to your data. There's internal threats and there's external threats, okay? When I say there's internal threats, I don't mean like hacking or internal hacking. What I mean is day-to-day -day mistakes, okay? Somebody, somebody accidentally deletes a domain controller, right? So you need to, to, to rebuild that or bring that back, right? Or that when I say a domain controller, your domain is really what I mean from that perspective, right? So uh, it's accidentally done, but it is human error, right? From that perspective, that could also be done maliciously as well, right? Uh, and the other things, right? Somebody accidentally um, trips over a server, spills water on a rack, you know, there, I've seen all, right, fr from that perspective. And then there's the external threats. So, and the external threats, I, I lump in the malicious stuff, right? Um, whether, and these are the things that keep us up at night, right, is, is ransomware attacks, um, malicious hacking, um, uh, data theft, things like that, right? Those are the things that really keep us up um, at night. I will say that, 90, well, 80 to 90 percent of your um, threats that and, and and reasons why you recover data. I shouldn't say threats, but reasons why you're doing your day-to-day -day recoveries. They're going to fall under the, you know, in the internal. Somebody loses something. Somebody accidentally deletes something, or hardware failure, or something like that. Right. That's what your day-to-day -day recovery and all that you're going to have to respond to. The other side of it, the external, the, the ransomware, the hacking, the, the all, all that kind of stuff, the malicious stuff, that is the one that's going to be the most impactful, right, and can, can impact you the most. So you need to make sure that you have a solution in place and steps in place to kind of help your day-to-day -day stuff, but then also be able to to help you in case you have those malicious acts that occur to you. Um, 
in the industry, right, we, we've always recommended, when I'm saying we, I'm talking about the industry, ha has recommended that you go with a 3-2-1 method. Okay, so it's been an industry standard for as long as I can can remember. That's the, the late 90s, right, um, and probably even before then. And that philosophy was, you know, you should have three copies of your data, one primary, two backups. Okay, they should be on two different types of media, right? Whether it be disk, whether it be tape, whether it be cloud, there's all different kinds of options for that second type of media, even tape, right? And then one copy should be offsite, and that offsite again could be to replicated to disk, it could be replicated to tape, it could be and moved, not replicated to tape, but sent to tape and then moved offsite. Uh, it could be, be moved to cloud, right, and copied out up there on cloud. So that offsite copy is really kind of, has always been that kind of protection. So if anything happened on your internal, you always had that offsite copy that you could fall back onto, right? And we used to have, you know, um, those, that approach, that three, two, one approach. Now we have, you know, um, more of a um, three, two, one, one, or some companies will refer to it as three, two, two. And a lot of cyber insurance companies are going to ask the question, is your data immutable? Do you have immutable backups? So that's really saying that, that somewhere within there, you're going to have an immutable copy of data within there. So I, I, in tape days, right, you put a tape in a vault, nobody can access it. Right, there are immutable clouds out there, Wasabi, S3 compatible, you know, and different things like that that offer immutable copies. And then there's immutable storage to hardware storage, okay, from, from that perspective. We're gonna hopefully talk a little bit about the 321 as we go through this, right? When you, when you look at the approach of data resilience, right? Your ability to recover, you know, quickly, right? Um, is your operational ability, right? Uh, being able to, to recover from, you know, that disaster, whether it be a natural disaster, whether it be a, um, a an event, a data loss event or, or, or something like that. That's really what we're talking about with data resilience. And we're going to, you know, we're trying to move into, and I think we've always fit into that data resilience platform quite well. UDP really fits into that very, very well from, from that perspective, okay? So what's kind of the, the importance of that data resilience? Well, you know, we, we all, I've kind of gone through those destructive elements, right? When we talked of, when, when we talked about, you know, uh, the, the lifeblood of the business and, and those kind of things, you know, so what are those elements that risk that, you know, and I, you know, the only one I didn't think I mentioned was natural disasters, which I live in Florida, you think I'd mention hurricanes, right? But um, so really there's those destructive elements and then there's those protective elements. Okay, so how do you protect that data, right? You encrypt it, um, you, you, you make sure that it's secure, you, you have security solutions in place to do that, you have immutable copies of that data, you have highly avail available or continuous available solutions, whether that be through your SAN, whether that be through um, your, um, some type of, of software, continuous availability software, or high availability software, Right. Um, and then, you know, to make sure that you secure that data protection, right, from, from that perspective. And as we look at this, it's kind of like an onion, right? And all these different layers, they, 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 they go down to and equal that data resilience platform, right? We have risk, we have cost, we have time. And I've always been a, a student of the power of three, meaning that there's always three things. In this case, it's risk, time, and cost. You can have two of the three, which two do you want, okay? And, and that's an approach for, for most things, right? If, it, if you can make sure you're protected against all that risk, right? You can quickly recover from all that. In a lot of cases, it's gonna cost you more, right? If you sacrifice on the cost, 
right on the budget, then you may have to give up a little bit on the time, or you may have to open yourself up to some of the risk, okay, from that perspective. So you really have to kind of, and, and there's always the, the weighing factor of budget versus the other two, right? I live in a magic world, right? I don't have a budget, but all of the, everybody in this call probably does have a budget, right? So you have to kind of weigh how you can get the best of protecting yourself against the risk, being able to quickly recover and bring everything back, right? Whether or not we're talking about application recovery, disaster recovery of, of, of the data itself, you know, or if it's just down to recovering files and folders, you have to weigh all of that, okay? And be able to do that. So when we look at ArcServe's data resilience platform, and this is where those different pieces, right? If I can afford to take longer to recover, well then maybe tape backup is a good solution for me. Okay. Or maybe just that tape backup is that off-site copy. So we have a lot of companies that want to use tape for off-site uh, of their data. Okay. We're also we also <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> So sorry, Stacy. We actually yeah. had a great question um, from one of our uh, uh, one of our attendees. Uh, is the immutable a third party or ERC serves on? I think that we're going to kind of like address that here on the slide as as we're coming into you know some of the different uh, you know ways to back up the data. We will. I will be covering that as we kind of go through, probably a little bit deeper in to the slides, but. Um, from an ArcServe perspective, we do have an immutable on-prem approach, right? So it's a hardware device that you're able to go to that, that will keep your either unstructured data or your backups, you know, immutable, have multiple um, snapshots of those data, of that data and be able to re recover from that quickly, okay? And be able to pull that back too. We'll just talk about some other options you have for immutability as well. Okay, and one of those those other options are cloud-based immutable storage. Okay, so we're going to support third-party clouds like um, Amazon S3, which has storage lock. Um, Wasabi offers a, a similar immutable option. I, I think it's also called storage lock. I'm not sure, but those are two that I can think of off the top of my head that you know are offering um, storage lock or immutability within their cloud that we also support. Okay. When we, we talk about, you know, cloud-based disaster recovery, again, being able to support public, private cloud, or own cloud, be able to spin up your systems in the cloud, you know, uh, and be able to give that quickly, uh, 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 that quick disaster recovery, get systems back up and running, not just in the cloud, but on-prem too. Okay, so I've had a customer, I've had more than one customer that's been hit by by ransomware before and they've had to rely on their backups. And the first thing they tend to do is they want to spin up, well, the first thing they do is they unplug fr from, from the network, right? So the cloud disaster recovery is great for, hey, I'm recovering from some type of event, non-malicious event. Usually when there's a malicious event, you know, you're, you're, engineers are going to take and uh, unplug you from the network until there's until they're sure that that's secure okay but internally right you need to get those systems back up and running okay so on-prem disaster recovery we offer that as well and when we talk about cyber secure data protection what we've done is we've partnered with sophos to provide you know um the ability to protect that backup data itself while sitting on disk. Um, so it's a, a close um, relationship that we have with them or partnership we have with them. And we'll kind of go through that a little bit deeper um, from that perspective. Now, if you're not familiar with ArcServe, who's ArcServe? And, you know, we've been, you know, in the industry since 83, okay? Uh, cut our teeth on Novell and mainframe. Um, so definitely have been around dealing with, you know, enterprise data, but then also small, medium business kind of data as well from that perspective. We're a worldwide company um, and you guys can read the slides, right? A lot of MSPs, a lot of um, presence, you know, across the world from that perspective, a lot of different customers, okay? 
Um, when you look at our, our portfolio, and I'm not going to go through this entire portfolio, it'd be kind of crazy to do that. We, we have everything from protecting small businesses, even some mid-market with that, you know, with kind of our, our MSP focused products uh, and then moving up into SaaS based solutions, mid to lower enterprise with our unified data protection product, but then even going up higher into kind of that enterprise area with continuous availability capabilities and all of that as well. We're gonna to focus today on unified data protection, but keep in mind that we do offer those um, other solutions as well. We have a question about, you know, um, um, you know, is our solution, you know, hardware, right? We offer both hardware and software um, for for our, our unified data protection product. We we offer uh, both of those. When we talk about our data resilience platform, right? Um, you know, from a perspective of, you know, the four pillars here, availability of your data, the security of that data, the ability to recover that data, right, which is going to be the most important kind of thing out of the, these whole pillars, right, coverability, how can you get that data back, how quickly can you get that data back, and then, of course, scalability, can we scale out to, to larger um, companies with that as well, okay, giving you that um, side from from that perspective too okay when we um in answer to uh, the question here about are we software or hardware we do offer the product as software so for companies that already have a server in place that can act as a backup server they already have storage in place that can act as a as a target then absolutely we can fit into that. And all of our features and functions can be done the same, whether or not you're running off of software or whether or not you're going to, to leverage one of our integrated appliances. Those appliances scale from four terabytes up to 354 terabytes, and that's pre-dedupe and compression, right? So um, we tend to see a three to one or better ratio with dedupe and compression when you you know uh, appropriate data right not video not cad data gis data stuff like that's gonna not gonna dedupe and compress as, as high right uh, but w with your normal data it's gonna dedupe and compress um, quite well so keep that in mind too um, in the industry people want you know be able to slide in a box and be able to protect their environment so we can offer that in some in some in environment sometimes it makes more sense to leverage your own existing hardware so we can support that as well okay big part of my job is sizing making sure that we have the right size appliance go into a customer site and the other part of my job it or another part of my job is if you're going to build out your own server make sure i give you the right um, components that you're going to need for that okay we talk about capabilities of unified data protection, um, number one, and I do apologize. I know the slide's not gonna build very well. I'll speak to what's on the left-hand side. I just realized that that's the design of the slide. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit of a um, challenge on the left, but that's okay, okay? So um, number one, you know, um, when we talk about, you know, Unified data protection, again, whether it's hardware or software, we give you that license for Sophos Intercept X Advanced Edition. That is going to protect that backup system itself and the data that's residing on that system, you know, to make sure that it's not gonna get encrypted, okay? So that our partnership with them, we're also the point of contact for that. Um, as far as the environments that we protect, this is what's on the left-hand side, physical systems, virtual systems, Windows, Linux. Um, on, on agentless protection, we support VMware Hyper-V, Acropolis hypervisor for Nutanix, you know, as well as a lot of other things within their shares, Active Directory, Oracle SQL, um, things like that as well. Okay, um, 
when we talk about you know that data and 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 how it's protected and you know where I'm going to move that offsite data if we're going to move that offsite data and the industry recommends that you do right um, number one we can move it to our one of our one safe device th devices they are um, uh, object based storage with a NAS front end so you're going to going to see it as or your users will see it as a NAS box. Um, but it's object-based storage, so it's very efficient uh, from that perspective as well. Now, uh, I wouldn't run VMs on this machine, okay? But I would take and use it as a destination, again, that I'm backing up to, or um, I'm talking about the one safe boxes, right? Um, that, that I'm either backing up to, or maybe it's acting as a file server, or in some cases, even, you know, for things like, um, dash cam or body cam video we've seen a, a lot of utilization for that you know where people want to keep a certain amount on-prem before they move it up to the cloud and all of that too okay um, and that that those devices they're scale out so i can have up to seven in a ring and they auto detect and expand the ring as you're going there i could have a whole presentation on that but um, keep in mind right that we do have that device as well um, from a cloud perspective, okay, being able to protect that cloud, that cloud is also, the ArcServe cloud is also um, protected by Sophos, although it's, you know, uh, transparent to you, but your, your environment up there is protected by Sophos as well, it's secured by Sophos. Um, or if you decide to go to public or private cloud, we can support that too. We support many of the publics and private clouds. Good question around RTO from cloud. Is the same as uh, on-premise storage? I would say, you know, um, typically, you know, you you would never have the same RTO because you're probably not going to have the same kind of bandwidth coming down as you would do as you would local. Okay, but it also is going to depend on what you're dealing with from that perspective. So RTOs is ve are very um impacted by the environment itself okay so keep that in mind too um another question out there about whether or not you can install udp on a virtual machine great question on a virtual machine if the virtual environment's robust meaning that i have you know redundancy built in fell over built in i'm on a cluster or something like that then you know typically i would say okay you can install it there and it's not really going to be that bad of a deal remember if it's protecting your virtual environment you lose your virtual environment you've just lost your backup server your data is still there and you can still access the data but you may have to install something somewhere to be able to get all the features all the functions from that perspective so typically uh, you know you know you have to to understand the environment whether it makes sense to, to install the backup server in that same environment that it's protecting. Now I have seen customers that they they virtualize their backup server, they they store it to the same SAN, they do all of that, and then they lose that SAN, and unfortunately, you know, uh, wasn't the best approach to that. They've lost in that instance their data and their backup server. So just need to to follow some best practices or some good practices uh, as far as that goes. Okay. And of course, you know, I mentioned before, we do have, you know, appliances as well. So this could be software or hardware. Um, we, these boxes come in one, two, and seven U boxes. The two U and above have additional processors within them to be de disaster recovery boxes and spin up systems directly on those. So keep that in mind too. From a secured by Sophos perspective, you know, it's providing that ransomware um, resilience, things like multi-factor authentication to be able to log in and manage it, um, giving you that, you know, comfort of that, you know, um, reliability that you're gonna be able to recover that data because it's not gonna be impacted. Um, and then, you know, from a overall, um, um, capability things like using virtual standby in cloud going up to to amazon or azure being able to do local dr within the boxes all of that fr from that perspective 
Okay. And again, I know we're all about costs. There's all different kinds of ways to leverage, whether it's CapEx or um, OpEx. Um, and then of course, you know, um, you know, being able to, to leverage those other diminished costs out there as well. Okay. My favorite slide, in fact, a lot of times when I do a demo, this is the only slide that I show. Um, we're recovery first, so you're going to be able to recover files, folders, entire systems, whether they be virtual or physical. We're going to be able to do automated testing of that data, right, where we can spin up that system. And as part of that test, we, we can spin that system up and we can make sure that we're, you know, things like services are starting and things like that as well. Okay. Um, so not just, yeah, the server started, but also, you know, the applications and those kind of things started as well. Always still being able to restore files and folders still. Um, from virtual standby instant VM, that's pre-planned or on the fly using emulation type of disaster recovery. So we support both of those. Virtual standby can go to you know, to Amazon, it can go to S3, did I say S3, Amazon, it can go to Azure. Um, S3 is not compute, right? So you wouldn't go to there from, from that perspective, okay? And then from a cloud perspective, you know, we can back up to the cloud, we can recover to the cloud, we can move our data to the cloud. A big feature of UDP 9 is being able to support S3 compliant. Um, things like Wasabi, right, where we could send the data up to Wasabi. Um, I did see where we could run instant VM from there, but you know, I don't know what the performance would be, you know, doing that emulation of, of disk emulation, you know, across the web, right? So just keep that in mind. But, you know, it definitely could pull that data back down from there, from, from that perspective, okay? Um, I mean, again, as far as systems we support, um, the most important thing I think here is more on the right hand side, the security, right? That data can be encrypted in motion and at rest. We can support air gapping that data, moving it to tape. Okay. And then overall, what has always been a big story with unified data protection for us is the fact the way that we handle that data, right? It's kind of unique to us in the industry um, that we handle the deduplication within our software and we do it from the source. Okay, so globally, we're going to take and compare that data that's unique at the source to the backup destination. So less data goes across the wire and less data resides on disk. Okay, other vendors out there will do, you know, it, they'll maybe do source side deduplication, but it's not global. Okay, or they'll do similar to this, but they need to land the data first. So they need to eat up some of their disk space in order to have a landing zone for the backups. So there's two key things that we don't need to do, okay, with this solution. It's very efficient. If we go back to the question earlier about installing this in a virtual environment, that's one of the things to consider because we're gonna do software deduplication. It does mean high IOPS on that particular server. So you need to make sure you plan for that as well, okay? Unify console, um, we have two consoles now. We have an on-prem console or a cloud console. Um, so we can, you know, either manage everything from the cloud or you can choose to manage, you know, from on-prem um, capabilities, okay? If you lose your cloud console, um, again, that ransomware kind of thing, you still have your data, right? While you're, un you know, unplugged from the network, you could install a console relatively quickly so you could, do some of the, the management pieces and all of that too, if you need to do that. Or you could just access the data, okay? From a Sophos perspective, you know, with their, um, with their, their protection that they're pro providing on that system, number one, you know, we're providing the license for that. You can plug this, if you use Sophos today, you can plug this into your central console that you're managing you know, with them, I think it's Sophos Central is what it's called. And you could just manage this as another node out there and you pick up the phone, you call us, okay? If you have any issues, okay? Now, from a perspective of, you know, you know, everything that it's doing, I'm not gonna read through all of these, but deep learning, exploit um, prevention, you know, root cause analysis, those kind of things, 
you know, definitely are things that, that you're, you know, gonna, gonna want within there for, from, from that perspective, right? So Intercept X Advanced Edition is the, the uh, solution that's running on there. Um, yes, we can absolutely send a copy of the slide. I also want to say if I miss anybody's questions out there, I'm kind of randomly answering them as I go. Um, we'll get answers to you guys afterwards if I miss anything. I don't know if we'll be able to get to the demo today because we are kind of going, you know, I mean, I am answering those questions as we go. But I'll see what I can do to do a short demo for you. Okay. Now, I spoke before about the one safe solution. Again, using OneSafe as that copy to store an immutable copy of, of the data. Typically what we'd recommend is you first do a local backup and then you either replicate that to another site that has OneSafe or you do an on-site replication to a to OneSafe device. And then maybe you even have another one off-site that, that you have replication set up um, within there as well. Now you see we have some other things here that we could do, like I can move some data to S3 compatible, um, or you know go out and have some disaster recovery capabilities around VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, those kind of things too down here on the bottom. Okay. If you're not new to UDP and you just want to know what's new in UDP 9, I saw a question earlier. Um, about you know upgrading from 8.1 to UDP 9. Um, let's talk about what's um, new in UDP 9 specifically. Um, there's a question out there about licensing. If we're going the software route, we can license by the amount of data that you have, the number of sockets in your environment that you have, or if we go the appliance route, it's what we can fit onto a box. Okay. That's probably a deeper conversation with us, so we'd love to kind of talk to you a little bit more about that. Okay, so what were our objectives within UDP 9, right? We definitely wanted to strengthen the, the data resilience platform itself and how we're uh, affecting that. Um, our, our unifying our SaaS management plane, right, as, from that perspective, um, Improving our support for enterprise applications, so Oracle, SQL, things like that. Um, always we're looking at, you know, um, the, the, the customer experience and making that better, okay? Um, and then, you know, um, identity management experience, right? So across the board, being able to do that. A lot of that was in the back end, okay? From that perspective, uh, things that we did um so that um depending on uh, and some of it you know when we get some of those features are more prevalent probably in the cloud console okay as opposed to the on-prem console from from that perspective okay when you look at our cloud-based management console um and i can demo this to you again where i'm gonna have to choose one or the other we'll probably go with the on-prem unless somebody notes in there uh, that they'd like to see the cloud console, I can show that as well. So if you just throw that in the questions, I can do that. Okay. Um, one of the key big, you know, things within UDP, right, number one, that it wasn't cloud managed. So we wanted to um, provide a cloud console capability. And we actually started the groundwork to this quite a while ago with our business continuity console. And this is just the next step to that. Okay, multi-organizational, multi-tenant capability, um, adding, you know, security levels to that as well. So being able to um, give you those those capabilities from that, right? Um, from a multi-organizational perspective, maybe I have factories, you know, across the, the, the country or state or whatever it might be. Every place happens to have a little IT staff or something like that. So maybe I want those broken out and managed separately. You can do that, maybe different access rights, different things like that, okay? Okay, um, security identity management, you know, again, strengthening our multi-factor authentication within the tool, um, being able to, you know, have some smart dashboard reports. I'm not reading through all these slides again in the interest of time, you know, but definitely strengthening, you know, identity management, 
um, giving, you know, um, when we look at the smart dashboard reports, being able to, within the cloud console, be able to see those reports, both um, um, being able to go in and, you know, see it from an all up view, all organizational view versus a single tenant view as well. Okay. Um, it enhanced our capability to go to things like Wasabi and, and S3, you know, and all of that as well, and being able to store incremental backups up there, not just full backups. Um, and then, of course, you know, increasing, you know, our, our, our workflows, working with REST APIs and those kind of things too from that perspective. Since we're not, because everybody's saying on-prem, uh, out there, so I'll just show a couple slides here. This is what the overall um, the environment looks like, the cloud console looks like. Um, pretty quick to manage if you use UDP before. A lot of the same flow is going to be within there. Um, from that perspective, um, you can also manage your um, direct to cloud solution within here, or our direct to cloud solution from within here too, and you can see those individual reporting and all of that from that perspective. Um, and again, what's your what's your status of your different um, components where your disk is, is residing, being able to see all of that, your deduplication ratios, compression ratios, those kind of things. This is the multi-tenant management where we can go in and see our different organizations and then go in and manage those set use, usage quotas um, and those kind of things too. And again, I, multi-tenant, yes, but multi-organization as well, okay? Um, as far as adding a cloud account, this would be like a third-party account like Wasabi or S3 or any of the, I shouldn't say any, but Google Cloud Storage. You're, you're just gonna um, label it whatever you want and then go ahead and pick that service from the drop-down list and put in your access key and secure, secure access key. There's a question about, and this is a very important question, about having both on-prem and cloud um, um, console. You would pick one or the other, cloud console or on-prem. And we do have a migration tool to help you go from the on-prem to the cloud console to migrate that up. We wouldn't see many people probably migrating back um, from that perspective. So um, right now it's just from on-prem to cloud. Um, and, you know, we can easily just add, manage to add data stores through the cloud console. We can create backup policies um, through there as well. Um, so that will be what we're looking at from, from that perspective. I kind of went through those a little bit quick. Okay, since most of the questions are about the on-prem. Now, the other enhancements that we came out with within um, within UDP nine, and one of the, one of the other ones was SQL Server. Um, we had some, I would say, some unintended difficulty within our SQL protection. Some of the the capabilities that we had in SQL, they were there, but you had to go command line we've pulled those into the actual GUI itself. So things like point in time restore, which before you had to do from command line, now you can do within the console, okay? Also, when you looked at your backups, right, it didn't tell you the sizes of the database. So if you're gonna restore a database and you're gonna restore it to a different uh, server, right? You needed to make sure there was enough room for it. Well, now you'll be able to look within the tool itself and be able to see the actual size of that database before you do the restore, which is kind of important, right, from, from that perspective. Also being able to do consistency checks as you're restoring that, that SQL data, right, so that you don't need to try to start it if, if you know that it didn't restore in a um, consistent state. Right. Um, as far as you know, additional enhancements, right? Alternate servers, instances, and paths, right? Of course, uh, uh, um, allows you to 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 put your logs separately and those kind of pieces too. Um, and then a big one here is restore in recovery mode or no recovery mode. 
And I'm no database admin or DBA, but I believe no recovery mode allows you to roll forward with logs and those kind of things. So a lot of times DBAs want to be able to go into a no recovery mode and we can do that. Okay. I'm not going to show these slides because I'm going to show you in the console, I'm making sure we have time for that. Um, Oracle, okay, and our enhancements in Oracle, quite some time ago, we eclipsed our SQL protection with our Oracle protection. Um, and now we're bringing that SQL protection up to the same level in some areas, right? Now, Oracle, we do things like we, we work with our man, right? So um, it does directly work with our man. So if you're running Oracle out there, um, you can leverage or our man in order to do those restores as well. Um, of course, we can do granular restore. So PDBs and table spaces, we can do that. Um, enhanced our Solaris support. So if you're running Solaris, we now support Solaris X64 as well as, as on a Windows and Linux platform. If you're a previous user of UDP, right? You may have ran into some issues if you're doing manual backups where you start to run out of disk space. Okay, so we address that by being able to label that as a daily backup or weekly or monthly. And then you can merge out those. That's actually a big enhancement, okay, from that perspective. Um, I've done quite a bit of, you know, kind of triage with customers when they start to run out of disk space. Let me go look what's going on in your environment. And usually I can, you know, um, um, save the customer some disk space and and let them get a little bit life out of their more life out of their storage before they need to upgrade or add new storage because of that. So this is actually a huge enhancement there from that perspective. Okay, we also um, included an incomplete backup kind of um, um, uh, notification. Now you would think, well, why wouldn't it tell me if a backup was in, was incomplete or not. Well, if you go in and say, okay, I only want to back up the C drive. I just had a customer that was doing this and they don't back up, you know, any of the other drives, or maybe it's something like in this case, it was a X drive. It was a data drive that's sitting out there and they're backing up their other drives. Well, in the big, you know, picture thing, that's an incomplete backup because we didn't grab all the volumes. We're not able to, to perform disaster recovery from there, right? So we can go in and we can mark, there's a way to mark those incomplete so you don't see them if you don't want to, but um, yeah, it would let you know, okay, yeah, you got an incomplete backup of the server now. Um, and then of course that could have been on purpose, right? So if you know it's on purpose, you can make it so you don't see those. Um, We've also upgraded our, our level of um, virtual standby support to support um, Gen 2 VMs that, that run up on Microsoft Azure. Um, they're standardized on that, so we support going into that as well. Um, note on the incomplete backups, um, security level, Microsoft went to an OAuth 2.0 authentication type. We support that for 365 and Google Cloud. Um, custom recovery points just speaks to that kind of that same issue, being able to re re remove those customs and reclaim that disk storage. Okay, and again, I'm not, these will be in there. So if we do send you the, the deck, you'll have these slides for review. Um, this is our new platform supported, okay, um, from that perspective. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna pull over my demo environment give me a quick moment yep here we go and we'll go ahead and log in udp is a browser-based tool so ie chrome firefox edge you know any of those um, you should be able to log in access it i haven't attempted on opera but i believe it works on on that as well any of your modern um, um any of your modern um, browsers it should support. Okay. Now my demo environment is usually shut down, so all the graphs don't always populate. Okay. 
and I don't have a lot of data out here. So, you know, customer would have a little bit more like you guys would have more uh, charts and different things like that from that perspective. But the dashboard is, you know, that central location where you first log in, what's going on. We see we have an incomplete backup here. You know, um, I can tell you that's, again, I'm not backing everything on that machine. So that's why it's telling me that it's an incomplete backup. And if I click on it, it can take me out and I can see it's my production system and so forth within there. Let's go ahead and reset my filters. Okay, and let's make the filter disappear. And now I'm on my resource tab, right? So the resource tab is where I do everything within UDP, okay? So we put a lot of effort within Unified Data Protection to make sure that you do not need to have a PhD in another console, right? Because, you know, uh, you need to know a million different tabs to go to, depending on what you want to do. We try to keep you in one section for everything that you want to do, okay? Even if I wanted to see, let's just trigger a backup real quick, right click, backup now, incremental backup, there we go. I left it as a custom. I probably should have changed it to a daily. A lot of people will want to go to the jobs tab, maybe if they had multiple, but look, I can go right here. I can go to the details of that particular one. So I never have to step off of this particular um, uh, tab, right? If I want to do my backups, my resource, my disaster recovery, I want to spin up a system that I've created for disaster recovery, right click on it, choose to to stand by the VM. And if I chose multiples that I had, I don't have multiples in mind because of disk space, but I could choose which snapshot. I only have two, again, limiting this because of disk space. Have I already configured the networking? If not, I can do it here. If there's multiple machines, what kind of order do I wanna boot them up? If I want to put a delay, so my domain controller comes up, wait, you know, three minutes, whatever it might be, for then my database system to come up, wait, you know, as well, three minutes or whatever, and then my web server come up, right? So, so, so all of that, I can have everything, I can leverage that boot orchestration as well to be able to do that, okay? And all I need to do here is power on the VM because it's already created. Um, from a recovery perspective, right click on a system, choose restore, and I can drill down into that system, whether it be a physical system, a virtual system, I can browse the recovery points, choose my backup date, directly download that backup data, drill down into it deeper if I want to, restore to the original or alternate location through the GUI if I wanna do that as well. If I have an agent on that machine, sometimes the easiest thing to do is go in, mount a recovery point, and just say, okay, let's mount this, and then go to that machine and go to that drive letter, and then pull that data over that way. So if you're more comfortable doing a mounted type of restore, we can do that as well, okay? Let's go back to restore. We can also, of course, if it was a virtual machine, recover the VM back into the virtual environment. Okay. If it was a physical machine, we could restore the entire system using a Windows PE recovery image that we create too. Okay. Um, a question out there. Um, let me make this a little larger so I can read it. If you lose on per, um, is the SQL backup feature part of the UDP license? Yes, it is. There's no add-ons for this. There's different tiers um, of license. There's advanced and premium. I'd always recommend you get premium. It has the automated testing within there, um, but um, and, and the Acronis support as well within there. But the SQL is just is part of the advanced and higher, right? So if I go in and I choose to restore this particular system, is running SQL, so I can browse my recovery points. I can drill down.
then we can go through and of course I can, I don't want to expand my C drive. I think I chose the wrong system. Hold on. Oh, yeah, I'm not on my uh, SQL, my server with SQL. So here we go, my production server. That was my um, domain controller, right? If I go to this one, choose to restore, browse my recovery points, and then I can expand out my SQL writer and all that within here. Okay, and another piece within this, let me just go here real quick. If I go and look at my plan for this, modify plan, go to my advanced tab, point in time enabled for SQL recovery to be able to go in and do that. I think this is running SQL Express, so although I enable it on this, it doesn't actually give me the point in time recovery on SQL Express because there's no logs, okay, um, from that perspective. So it's hard to demo that piece, okay. How do you isolate the, the storage um, so that it does not become infective? Well, let's talk a little bit about OneSafe real quick because I think that's a good tie into that. If I was going to replicate the data to a OneSafe device, all I would do is I would go in here to my recovery point servers. Um, I could use the same backup server, the same RPS. And what I do is right click and I would add a data store. Okay, and now I need to give paths and destinations. So these would be shares that we create on there. Okay, so that we're going to then, of course, um, replicate that data from UDP to the data store that's created using the backup server for that. And uh, on the uh, one system, which UD, which OneSafe uses to manage it, you set up your immutability and all of that from that side. So it's just a matter of going in, creating a new data store. Do you want to encrypt? Do you want to deduplicate those kind of things from, from that perspective? It would be as easy as that. If I'm replicating to another site, then I'd have a um, another um, server over there. Doesn't need to run a console, but another backup server that we'd replicate. If there's no unique data, it doesn't require a license. And then we'd create a data store similarly, where we would point to the one say for other disk storage, okay, from that perspective. And of course you could go to other storage, you know, um, as long as you have a route to it and those kind of things too fr from within that perspective, okay. Not much of a demo, I do apologize. We were running a little tight on time there. Um, if you want more of a demo, please let me know. We can set something up and I can give you a more personalized demo, deeper dive into the solution. But kind of in summary, you know, first off from a UDP perspective and providing that, you know, um, proactive kind of approach, um, integrating and tying in, you know, from a perspective of, you know, security, those kind of things, you know, UDP is definitely going to give you, you know, the, the capabilities there from, from a deduplication side of things, supporting a, a wide variety of workloads, have things like automated testing, improving your RPO and RTOs. And then, of course, that Sophos Intercept X Advanced Edition, you know, securing that, that box itself, okay, and that data. Now, nothing is quite complete without, um, as my screen <laughs> went to sleep there on me real quick, odd. Um, you know, if, if you're talking to cyber insurance companies today, they're probably asking about immutability, right? So definitely we have multiple ways that we can do that, either our on-prem hardware with OneSafe or being able to support and take the data places like S3 compatible, you know, um, solutions like, you know, S3 storage lock, Wasabi, um, and those kind of things too, okay? And then of course, air gapping, there's two types of air gaps, 
right? There's logical and there's physical. Tape would be considered physical air gap because it's actually off the environment. I've seen people that do disc and they unplug it when they're not using it. I guess that would be physical air gapped as well, you know, but then there's also logical air gapped where you have different sets of credentials and those kind of things to to, uh, to access that data, different rights and those kind of things too. Um, cloud would fall into that, right? Cloud and even some, if you're moving the data offsite with different credentials too. So, I mean, keep in mind, right, we're providing that multi-layered defense for your backup data. Um, this is pretty much everything I just said, I think, as far as that goes with our UDP secured by Sophos, um, our, our appliances for on-prem hardware, right? But remember, you can go with software if you want to, if you want to go that route as well, providing also cloud-based, you know, destination Big part of the ArcServe Cloud is we don't charge for egress of the data back out. Okay, so keep in mind. But then we support third-party clouds, public cloud as well. And then of course, you know, being able to have that reliable recovery, you know, and then of course, you know, immutable copies, cyber insurance is starting to require this, you know. So we we of course being able to support that as well. Kind of wraps it up right on time. I'm going to hand it back over to Jordan, and um, I'm going to thank you before I hand it back over for your time today, and um, we'll let Jordan wrap it up. Awesome, Stacy. Great presentation. Uh, you know, sometimes the the demo there's time, but we had so many great questions here today, and we love the engagement. We're really happy that you know there was some like pretty deeply technical and some very uh, you know, some great questions about UDP. Um, I have put a link in the chat for the webinar that is a link to our demo request form. So if you have some, you know, ongoing lingering questions that uh, about UDP, old version, new version, any version, and how UDP plays with our other uh, products like OneSafe uh, that, that uh, Stacy spoke to, Please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you know, let us know that you came in through uh, um, the webinar discussion, and, and we can really drive home any anything that you you know might be outstanding uh, from today's discussion. Um, I don't have a drum roll here, but <laughs> um, we do have uh, a winner for today's $300 Amazon gift card. Um, Afif Kadri, if I'm if I'm announcing that correctly, uh, if you could just respond here in the chat, uh, let us know that, um, let us know what your email address is. Um, well, actually, just let me know if, okay, good. Thank you for confirming. Uh, I'll reach out, we'll be in touch. Again, thank you everybody for being here today. Um, we're gonna leave the, we're gonna leave the webinar running here for a few minutes. So if you did want to click on that demo request link, um, it, that'll that'll be um, available as you know for for a few minutes here. So thanks again, everybody, for your time. Um, yeah, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Take care, everyone. <laughs>